company warned candidates spew Islamophobia. Okay, again, Islamophobia. Can't these Muslim front groups stop it already with the, with the fake uh, victimhood? Can they cut it out already? Maybe they can make believe they're Americans for one day and get on the side of the victims instead of pretending that they're offended by it. Mm, hello, CG. Oh, this is an important one. I played it yesterday. I was the only one in radio who caught this, and we culled it for you. All of you talk show hosts are on vacation listening to me right now. Make a note of it and tell your producers to get it for next uh, two weeks from now when you come back. This is so good. I want to ruin your vacations when you listen to this. It's so good that you're going to have to send an emergency text to your producers to get this soundbite. Right after Pelosi gave away, I mean, right after, excuse me, Paul Ryan, the Quisling, who is running a puppet Democrat party inside the Republican Party, after the Quisling Ryan gave away the store, Pelosi was overheard saying this in clip 10. Listen carefully. I think our success with our members is that in the Republicans' obsession uh, with lifting the oil export ban, they really gave away the store. Uh, Democrats were able to strip the, our scores and scores of poison pills, destructive poison pills, some of which they had to have, which they ended up with not having. So Pelosi let it slip that the uh, lobbyists inside the Republican wing of the uh, American machine were obsessed only with coal. That would be McConnell, the liar. Remember how tough McConnell was until the coal thing came up? And all of a sudden, he suddenly became a dumb, dummied up for the Democrats ever since they gave him the coal six months ago. Now they lifted the oil ban on the import-export ban for the oil uh, magnates. And uh, that was the end of it. Then they threw the country to the wolves. They let the, the Democrat socialist thieving wolves take the country away f from us, we the people. Remember in the dim past, we're talking, what era was that? 1890s, 1910, 20, the robber barons. We heard about robber barons who existed in America, the original Rockefeller, Vanderbilt. Warren, remember they were known as robber barons? Well, that term robber barons applies today. And they would be those in the upper reaches of the Internet fortunes who pay no taxes or very low taxes by using trickery such as the Triple Irish where they set their dummy companies up in Ireland and they don't pay U.S. taxes on $70, $100 billion in income. They would be the robber barons of today. Agree with me or not? I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. There's a big story on Newsmax right now, which goes along with what I've been telling you, that Latinos are on to Hillary's fetid campaign. Latinos scold Hillary on Twitter, you're not my abuela. You see, she had one of her sorority friends come up with the idea that she should sell herself as America's grandmother. And she's pitching her grandmotherness as one of the most important things on her Spanish, uh, to our Spanish audience, uh, to Hispanic voters. And a backlash is gaining steam on Twitter under the hashtags, uh, uh, not my abuela and hispandering which one post the grousing the website pitches anything but subtle. And they're selling, I could just cut it out. They said it's baiting, you're baiting us. And uh, they say that uh, another complaint, she never got to go to her own grandmother's funeral. Well, you get the picture. She's trying to make believe that she's courting Hispanic voters by making believe she's their grandmother. And talking about that. And, and the, the great champion of, of womanhood says nothing about the rapes, murders, and slavery of young girls in the Middle East by Muslims. Now, the Latinos apparently don't care about that, but they don't like being pandered to. Now, a Univision poll in July said that 73% of Latino voters would cast a ballot for Clinton. I don't believe a word of it. Univision is a distortion, a total distortion. A Washington Post-ABC News survey in September found it strongly favored by voters of color. Really? Do the polls again. And here's what you're going to find out, that, quote, voters of color, which, by the way, unto itself is offensive to me as a white man. But let's use the phrase that the liberals use, voters of color. The ones who would not vote for her would be ashamed to answer a pollster and say, I'll vote for Trump. But they're going to vote for Trump. They hate her. In the 2008 presidential primary in which she was schlonged, 
as Trump indelicately phrased it. Clinton won two to one among Latinos, the Post reports. In the 08 presidential primary, in which she was schlung, as Trump indelicately phrased it, I'm quoting now, Clinton won two to one, God, <laughs> among Latinos, the Post reports. Yeah, but that was then, this is now, there was no Trump. He's changed the quotient. Minorities love him. Blacks and Hispanics love him. I told you why. You're not going to read this. What do you think, Jake Tapper of, of Pravda is going to tell you that? Trump is going to win. He's going to win blacks. He's going to win Hispanics. He's not alienated Hispanics, despite his statement on immigrants. And do you know why? Because Hispanics don't want people walking across the border and taking jobs that would otherwise go to them. That's why. But don't tell that to those in Pravda. And the same is true for African Americans. I said that over and over again. Who do you think is being damaged most by the millions of illegal aliens that uh, the Fang is bringing in? The illegals the Fang is flooding across the border. If there's a limited amount of money for social services and people are poor, why would they want competitors for that money? They don't. So they also are. They also oppose illegal immigration. Black or Hispanic or the poor whites would rather have Trump. And they know he's a businessman who made his fortune on his own. And they know she's nothing. She never worked a day in her life. Has Hillary Clinton ever built a business or a service that anyone ever used? Tell me. Is there a tower anywhere in America built with the name Hillary on it? Is there a bridge or a building or a roadway that she ever built? Nothing. She's nothing but a politician. As such, she has contributed nothing to our society. So they'd rather have a businessman. Because one thing poor people know is that a person in business just might make things better for them by creating jobs. For example, they Bernie Ward, they don't have Bernie whatever his name is, Bernie whatever his name is, then no one pays attention to him. He's a, he's, he's a jokester. They know he's just a fraud put up to make Hillary look centrist. They're not going to vote for a schmendrick like him. Why would a poor person want to vote for a schmuck who's going to take away money from people? What, is he going to give it to them? Oh, like Obama did? Oh, yeah, Obama robbed from the rich and gave to the richer. Hello? Write that one down. Obama's like a reverse of Robin Hood. Robbed from the rich and gave to the richer. It is clear that the West is killing itself. Sweden to use cruise ships to house refugees. Refugees streaming into Sweden are being given an unusual housing option, a cruise ship. Some 1,260 asylum seekers will be offered shelter aboard the ship. The Swedish migration agency, known as whatever, struck the deal with the ship's owner and said the move is odd. It's nothing, uh, it's, it's nothing we're used to. It's new for Sweden, and it's also new for the shipping industry. So they're taking all of the Muslims who invaded Sweden, and they're now putting them on a cruise ship to give them a nice vacation, while poor Swedes have to keep working. Isn't that nice? Isn't liberalism a wonderful way of life? You take the poorest in Sweden, and you let them live in abject poverty, and then you take invaders and you put them on a cruise ship. I can't wait to see what happens on that cruise ship when you pack 1,260 of them on a cruise I just can't, I can't wait to see. Sweden has an awful lot of female blonde workers. I cannot wait to see what goes on on that ship. I guess they'll have to change the menu as well for their sensitive uh, newcomers. Yes, indeed, liberalism is a mental disorder of a severe level. Let's take some callers on the Savage Nation. WBAP. Yeah, can I announce that now, what's happening on BAP? So when is that happening, Robert? Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that my show is moving in Dallas from WBAP, uh, as it were, across the street to KLIF for reasons I do not understand. And I want all of my loyal listeners in Dallas to know I can still be found in the city on KLIF. I have no idea why this was done. They gave me the third hour. It's moving. It's doing very well. I have no idea, but it's, it's not, uh, not my decision. Sorry, but I'll be on KLIF. I used to be on that station, by the way, years ago. So my Dallas listeners, that's where I will be. Mike on WBAP, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. It's an honor and privilege to speak with you. I've been a, a staunch listener for you for years, and I love Trump. Here's the problem I have. I, I drive for a living. I meet an awful lot of people, and unfortunately, the most of them I do speak to, the Hispanics, the blacks, and the Asians, are not for Trump. They think more of him as a bully and like that stupid Clinton, which I can't stand her for anything, but... 
they look at her, they look at him as as almost like a comedian and okay but what do you mean they like Hillary they they're buying her act no they don't like her but they don't like Trump and okay so it's the, the lesser of two evils they'd rather have a corrupt woman than a successful uh, let's say businessman that they don't like I don't agree with it either but and I think they're going to mostly motive or move towards uh, Cruz I think Cruz is going to end up getting it. And I don't want to see that. I like Trump, and I like his ideas. Wait, wait. You're, are you saying if Cruz wins the Republican primary, he would have a better chance with minorities than Trump? And everybody that I speak to. Okay. Here, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting with you. I, I'm just asking. Vice president, that's, because that's where he would get the vote from the you know Hispanics and Asians, probably. What, all because of his name is, is Cruz? That's, that's enough to get your vote? Of course it is. Well, you got to remember, I'm living in Texas here, and he's from Texas, and he's real. I know. It's so amazing, you know, uh, racial politics, ethnic politics in America. It's not a new phenomenon. I mean, in New York, why were there so many uh, candidates who are of a particular ethnic group? Why? Because the ethnic group dominated the city. That's all. People tend to vote with their own ethnic group, incidentally. That's that's an old American uh, f fact of reality. There's nothing new under the sun with that. Ethnic groups... Vote for their ethnic group. You go and watch a boxing match, and you have a, a fight between an African-American and a Hispanic, and you have an audience of Hispanic and African-Americans, you'll find racially it's divided by their race. Am I right? That's why they pit them against each other. The same in politics. The same in politics. All right, Mike, have a merry... Hold it. Merry Christmas to you. A copy of the great bestseller, Government Zero, goes out to you. It won't arrive in time for Christmas, but you'll have it in time for New Year's Eve. Hmm. <laughs> Why you should leave cookies, not carrots, for Santa's reindeer on Christmas? That's ridiculous. That's absurd. Santa's reindeer. That's absurd. I'd rather talk about men's shoes than talk about Hillary Clinton. It'd be more interesting for me to talk about whether you prefer laces or loafers than Hillary Clinton or Ted Cruz. <laughs> Can we let this go for a minute? No, you won't let it go. Everyone wants to talk about the election. That's all you want to talk about. John on WABC, thanks for holding. What's on your mind, John? Well, John, are you still there? Okay, go ahead. Fire away. You're on the radio. Go ahead, please. This is the most auspicious and heralded occasion to make your acquaintance. <laughs> yeah, right. Talk about the same vintage. <clears throat> and the thing I enjoy about your sense of humor, you guys from, I'm from the West Coast, but you guys from the part of New York that you're from, you just have this wicked sense of humor that I really like. You're smart and funny, and you know you're you're in there with Joan Rivers, Jackie Mason. <laughs> That's some compliment to put me in with Joan Rivers. She's dead. Jackie Mason's a corpse. But thank you very much for putting me in their league. Yeah, I mean it, it's just you can't keep up with you guys. <laughs> no, Jackie is still good. I I he, I love the guy. He's old and he's slow, but he's still he's sharp as attack. Oh yeah, and and Don Rickles. Yeah, he's Another one dead. Is, it, is he still alive, too? You're putting me into the graveyard already. No, I don't know. All, all, I need is a tr all I need is a transfusion tree and false teeth to go with this with this call. Mike, I love you, and then you're skewing me. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> hey, no, I don't. It does, if you enjoy the show, that's the main thing. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. Teddy, you hear the insults I just had to put up with? What it made us to do for a living with my, with my intelligence and my success level? What I had to just put up with, Teddy? You hear? Would you take that as a dog? He just woke up, Teddy. He's looking up, saying, do you let that guy get away with that? That was pretty good. Mike, I'm 95. I'm in your age bracket. I think you're wonderful. You're like all the dead comedians I grew up with. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm in a good mood, though. I'm jolly. I'm putting on weight from the, uh, the stress I'm under. Horrible. I mean, with what Obama's doing to the country, I'm eating a lot. I'm drinking too much. I'm not exercising. The rain has got me. Oh, but you're going to have the weather in the east soon. Don't don't fall for the global warming. Everyone in the East, oh, it's a heat wave and the global warming. Wait, the weather we just had through here, the storm that's raging across, will hit you in two, three days. You'll have a, maybe you'll have a white New Year's Eve. I can't even say that. Wait a minute. I mean, maybe you'll have a uh, white Christmas. Can't say that. Wait a minute. Maybe you'll have a snowy Christmas. Or maybe you'll have a winter Christmas. Can't say white Christmas anymore. I'm dreaming of a snowy Christmas. Can't say white Christmas, Teddy. That's That offends certain people. Actually, when you think about it, I, I said this years ago, I think eventually that school children will not be able to um, color clouds white. They won't, I think that the white crayon has to be thrown out of the Crayola pack. 
It has white privilege all over it.